I wouldn't argue against someone saying Failure Frame is an edgy isekai. I wouldn't argue if they said that the 3D was quite noticeable. But here's the thing about Failure Frame. I love it. Call me isekai trash? Say I have garbage taste. I don't. Frankly, I don't give a damn. The 3D reminds me of Soma Spider So What. A lot in the anime community thought the 3D in Soma Spider So What was the worst thing I ever saw. I looked at it and I said, hey, I know it's 3D. And I'm like, yeah, there's, especially on the human models, I was like, yeah, I would have preferred in 2D, but it's still fine to me. But there are 3Ds that I've seen, and I'm like, damn, that's god awful. I don't want to look at it. For me, this type doesn't bother me. Do I notice it more in episode 2 than 1? Of course. I still think the monster designs in general work in 3D better than the human models. But yes, there's clearly going to be a lot of 3D. And I don't think it's wrong to criticize it for that. It just doesn't bother me to the point of wanting to drop it. And I do think it's edgy. I think it knows it's edgy, but it's like one of the rare cases where you have an edgy Isekai MC. And honestly, the transition from nothing to extraordinary over this episode was handled really well, in my opinion. The casual sitting on, like, a corpse of, like, a dragon as your poison and stuff inflict- He went from, like, 30 mana to, like, 40,000 by the end of this episode. And the idea of going up against a soul eater and the bait and switch of us thinking he doesn't want to kill anyone who looks like humans to saying, gotcha, bitch, was fantastic. I have full live reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these Failure Frame episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively. This is legitimately one of my favorite shows of the season. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Did I see a lot of people, big YouTubers, big channels, a lot of comments saying how bad the show was last week? Yep. Did that change my tune? Nope. And, uh... I don't know what people are saying about episode 2. I have to imagine it's a lot of criticizing of the 3D. But I legitimately enjoy the MC's personality. I appreciate that even before the whole, like, final boss battle thing. As he was going through this, like, cave. And he was taking things from people who clearly passed away trying to escape themselves. There's a few different times you see him pray as he's taking things away. Like, he's very respectful. He doesn't want to be a simple grave digger, a grave robber, right? Because these were people at the end of the day, and they've done him no wrong. And if you can look at, like, the start of the show on the bus and everything like that, he very much clearly doesn't just hate humanity for the sake of hating humanity. He lived a shit life, and since a kid, has had thoughts of taking bad people's lives. And you can't even blame the kid, given the type of physical and emotional abuse he went through. But the idea that this whole life he's tried to be this high school kid, this student who was do no wrong but still got treated bad every step of the way. And yes, he's at a point now where if you were to try to hurt him, he probably would poison your ass and you wouldn't see tomorrow. But I love the idea that even though all that's here, deep down he was still, he was thanking the people's stuff that he took. And the fact that we got to see all of their spirits after he freed them because it was the Soul Eater was such a touching moment because it really makes you feel like, okay... You know, does he want to kill that goddess? Does he want to make her suffer? 100% he does. And, and he's not the only one. As seen by the dude with the ancient magic that we can't read just yet. But the whole idea that, you know, the he's going up against this, like, I don't even know, man. Like, they were, they were gross looking. And honestly, I think it works even better in 3D, if I'm being honest. Like, they're very noticeable 3D, and I'm not saying they're beautiful to look at, but those monstrosities of what should have been abortions, um, fantastic creatures to try to haunt him he's like i don't want to hurt anyone and the idea that because the first time he tries to attack that thing has like a lightning quit reaction time it was crazy and the idea that it was pretty much a gotcha bitch moment because as his back is torn because this thing just likes to torture right like it could have swarmed at any point and the idea that he never put his hand down and when at least expected it paralyzed and it's crazy it was such a clever way because not only was it a clever way to enhance your character from the get-go we knew there was something special about him after last week's episode, but it's the, the way that he had like a mob of hundreds if not thousands, and he obviously was running out very quickly of mana. The idea that as the poisons were like, you know, seeping away, and as they died, he would then level up, meaning he had more mana, more skills, more strength, and the skills themselves were also being enhanced. It was a very, very clever way to go about making your character completely busted, but also, you got to understand the limitations. Like, you can't just spam poison, poison, poison. It has to be like a poison to a paralysis or something like that. You just got a lot of ideas. And then the casual moment, I think this is actually my favorite point in the episode, 
I don't remember the last time I've seen this. Hunger. An Isekai MC who gets tossed away by a goddess, thrown into the pits of hell quite literally, starts starving. And I have to imagine, it's like, you know, you go to the gym for an hour, you, you're hungry, you want, you want that protein, you're very, you got that rumble in your tummy. This dude was, for god knows how many hours, casting how much mana, like that has to feel excruciating. And the only thing he had around him was the eyeball. That's the only thing he could get out, and it just tasted like battery acid. And while well, yes, his magic bag ends up giving him some jerky and Coca-Cola after he infuses it with some purple mana, it's some sort of item dispenser seemingly of what he puts in is what he gets out. But it's the idea that he's not just like, well, I just gotta power through my hunger. Like he's like, well, there's some dead bodies behind me. It's not gonna taste great, but it's about all I have. I appreciate that there's actually some thought put into this show. I'm not saying this is the most groundbreaking show I've ever seen. People are gonna make their comparisons to a lot of other edgier isekais that have come out that have large fan bases, and they're gonna say, oh, it reminds me of so-and-so. I dig it. I really do. And it's just, like, it clicks for me more. If I'm being honest, this might click with me to such a degree, and it is one of if not my biggest surprise of the season, because I thought it would be a fine isekai at best, or an edgy mess at worst. And the fact that I can boldly say, oh, it's edgy, but I want more? I'm here for this one, like, shoot me. If people despise the 3D and they say they're not going to watch because they hate it, I get it. I look at it and it's, it's fine. That's really my thing. It's like, yeah, when he's in human 3D, it's like, yeah, I would have preferred that 2D. But I would say like 60% of the time in this episode in particular, the 3D on the monsters, I was like, oh, I, I prefer it in this moment. But yes, there was definitely probably 40% of this episode. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe seeing that in 2D would have been better. Not going to lie. But I dig it. I think it. I think really because we were in a cave, a darker setting, it really helped blend in that 3D. If this was on the surface, I think it would be a lot more noticeable. And I think my criticisms for the 3D could get worse as it goes on if it's more bright scenes. Time will tell. All I know is I'm I'm needing episode 3. Let me know your thoughts and feelings though down below. Are you going to keep on watching Failure Frame? Because I definitely know I am. Let me know down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell and like I mentioned. Full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. Alrighty, so today we have Peaceful Hermit. MW. Crizo Wiper. Starcraft 48. Connor Reeves. And we also have Green Beans. So I am. Appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. And I guess if you ever have a magical bag, um, maybe try looking in that first before eating the, the acid eyeball. That did not look pleasant. Though I gotta be honest, I wonder how it tastes going from battery acid to Coca-Cola, because even though Coca-Cola does taste good to me, that's gotta seem kind of similar to battery acid after going from that, but is what it is. Have a good one.